Hello. In one of my previous tutorials, Antiviruses Part 2, I briefly discussed a program called UVK, Ultravirus Killer. Ultravirus Killer has all the tools you would need to find and remove viruses and repair your system. And this is part one of my UVK tutorial series. I have a lot to cover, so I'm going to go kind of quick. And I'm going to start with Process Manager. Process Manager shows the processes that are currently running on your computer. There's three columns. There's the executable path, which shows the full path of the process executable file. The publisher column contains the executable file's publisher's name, and the PID is the process's ID. This is a good place to start if you suspect there's malicious software running on your computer. If you see a file that looks suspicious, you can highlight the entry, right-click on it, and observe the properties of the executable file. This is the properties box. It shows the process ID, the process name, the image path, the command line path, the file description, the file signature, and whether it's verified or not, the MD5 hash, and you can also submit the MD5 hash to VirusTotal, and I'm going to do that real quick. VirusTotal will give you a report and tell you if the executable file was safe or not, and right here it says VT infection rate 0 of 42, 0%, which means it's safe, and it also gives you the time of date when the report was created. Virus Total will also put an icon on your desktop and you can click on the icon and it will take you right back to that page so you can view it again if you need to. When you right click on a highlighted entry you'll get a menu of different options of how to manage the file and the menu includes the process properties which I just showed you and when you're in the process properties and you submit the MD5 hash to Virus Total, if an entry turns out to be a virus you have a lot of ways you can manage it. You can kill the selected process which will kill the process without deleting the executable file. You can kill all processes with the selected path. This kills all processes with the same path as the suspicious file. There's an option to kill processes and delete files. This will kill the process and delete the file including the executable. You can also kill all the listed processes. If you select this option you will have three different choices of how you can manage the process. There's kill all non-trusted processes. With this, UVK will verify the digital signature of the process to kill. And if the signer is not a part of the trusted signers list, the process will be killed. Kill all non-essential processes will ignore the process essential to the operating system and kill the rest. Kill all non-critical processes kills all the processes that are not critical to the operating system functions. UVK has a security feature to protect critical Microsoft processes. If you were to accidentally choose a critical process, you will be warned that the file is digitally signed and asked if you are sure you want to delete them. And unless it's absolutely necessary, you don't want to remove critical Microsoft files. And for more security, the most critical processes are not shown in the process list. From the welcome screen, you can select scan and create log, and then check show Microsoft files in the report and the log shows all the signatures of all the processes executable files. From the drop down menu you can also choose to submit the MD5 hash to virus total. You can search the file name with Google and Google will open to the search results page and you can search to get more information on the file. You can also search the file name in run scanner. You can verify the signature, open the file location and open the file properties. And above you have the same options as you have in the right click menu. Here it shows the number of processes that are in the list right now and right here it says critical processes are not shown so no critical processes from Microsoft are shown on the list. And I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to open up Google. And when Google opens I'm going to use the control button on the keyboard and I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to select both entries. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to select kill process. And the process is killed and Google is now closed. I'm going to go back to the welcome screen and I'm going to go to startup entries and scheduled tasks. Startup entries and scheduled tasks shows all the startup entries and tasks that are scheduled to run on your computer. Just like processes, if you would accidentally have a Microsoft file selected, you will be warned. To prevent this, you can select hide Microsoft signed files and not only does it prevent you from removing critical files, it also makes it easier to search and find files you want to manage. The right click menu has the same options as processes so I'm not going to go through them right now. And I'm going to go back to the welcome screen. 
and I'm going to go to Windows Services and Drivers. This window will show you a list of all the Windows services and drivers that are running on the computer. You can get information on the services and manage them from here. The right click menu has the same options as processes and startup entries and scheduled tasks. Above you can stop the service, start the service, pause the service, and you can also choose to resume the service. If you select startup type you'll have six options. You can choose to automatically delay the services from running at startup. Automatic will run the services automatically during startup. Manual will give you the option to start the services manually. Disable the service is good for disabling a service that you feel may be giving you a problem. You can also choose to have the service or driver start at boot up or you can choose to have the services or driver start after the system has finished booting up. The right click menu has a couple different options than the others. You have the delete service and delete service and file. In the upper corner in service display settings this allows you to change what services will be displayed and this allows you to hide services that you know are safe making it easier to search and find a malicious service and now I'm going to go to delete or replace file or folder you can either manually type the path of the file or folder or you can browse for the files or folders that you want to manage by clicking on the add files or add folders option you can then delete them by clicking on the delete listed in the replace or copy of file section you can browse for the file or folder that you want to use to replace the file and as with all the other tasks that we've discussed you can hold the control button on the keyboard and select more than one file or folder to manage at a time and I'm going to go to scan and create log you can have UVK scan your system and create a log with all the critical information of the system you can choose what you want to include in the log you can also have UVK check signatures and show MD5 hashes you can choose a maximum amount of recent files to show in the log and the extensions you want to search for and show in the log. You can run a custom scan by entering commands in the custom box. You can also choose to show or not show Microsoft files and you can choose to tell UVK where to store the log. Once you have your selections checked you can click start scan and after it's finished the scan you can analyze the log. And I'm going to go back to the welcome screen and I'm going to go to run UVK scripts here you can select different repair options you can run a full system repair script which runs about 12 different scripts to repair your computer this also includes creating a restore point before it runs the fixes if you select full maintenance script UVK will run a full system maintenance you can also choose the repair and maintenance script and UVK will repair non-essential programs and clean up your system. Below you can choose whether to create a restore point, empty temporary files and folders, empty the recycle bin, create a log and import commands from UVK command scripts, and there's also the option to select all or none of the extras listed. After you've selected the options click run fix listed and it will run the repairs. And I'm going to go back to the welcome screen. I'm going to select UVK tools. To manage a file in UVK Tools, click Browse and select the file to manage. If you click File Information, UVK will show you the important information of the file, such as the path of the file, the publisher, and whether they are verified or not. It will show a description of the file, the size of the file, the associated extension, the associated command, the MD5 hash, the SHA1 hash, and the virus total infection rate. You can send the MD5 hash to VirusTotal and you can also view the properties of the file. In more actions it has the same options as the right click menu and previous tasks discussed. Once you have all files selected click perform actions and UVK will perform the actions you chose. In the registry tool section you can choose registry keys to manage. In the drop down list you can search the key names with Google. Protect the key by password protecting it. Unlock the key will allow the key to be managed without password protection. You can also unlock and delete the key. You want to be very careful not to delete an important registry entry. This can cause your computer to run unstable or not at all. Once you have your options selected, you would click Perform Action. System Restore Management shows all the system restore points that have been created on your computer. To manage system restore points, you have the options of deleting restore points, create a restore point before you run the task, or you can also disable System Restore. I'm going to go back to the welcome screen. I'm going to select UVK tools. 
To manage a file in UVK Tools, click Browse and select the file to manage. If you click File Information, UVK will show you the important information of the file, such as the path of the file, the publisher, and whether they are verified or not. It will show a description of the file, the size of the file, the associated extension, the associated command, the MD5 hash, the SHA1 hash, and the virus total infection rate. You can send the MD5 hash to virus total and you can also view the properties of the file. In more actions it has the same options as the right click menu and previous tasks discussed. Once you have all files selected click perform actions and UVK will perform the actions you chose. In the registry tool section you can choose registry keys to manage. In the drop down list you can search the key names with Google. Protect the key by password protecting it. Unlock the key will allow the key to be managed without password protection. You can also unlock and delete the key. You want to be very careful not to delete an important registry entry. This can cause your computer to run unstable or not at all. Once you have your options selected, you would click Perform Action. System Restore Management shows all the system restore points that have been created on your computer. To manage system restore points, you have the options of deleting restore points, create a restore point before you run the task, or you can also disable system restore. I'm going to go back to the welcome screen. And that concludes part one of my UVK tutorial series. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.